The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Merstad. I'm Professor Harris, PhD student. And today, I'm going to talk about load rating strategies for bridges with limited or missing as built information. So this is our group team, uh, including two professor, including um, the, uh, Professor Harris as a leader of the project, including two PhD and two PhD student, including me and a uh, master student. So first of all, I'm going to talk about some uh, motivations we had behind finding uh, these load rating strategies. There are about uh, 21,000 bridges in without inventory. So uh, about half of them needs to be inspected um, yearly because their condition changes. And uh, we need to uh, update their load rating uh, process, but missing or incomplete details creates a fundamental issue for load rating process. For example, if we don't know about uh, some quality and quantity of the rebars inside the uh, bridge, we won't be able to calculate and do load rating process properly. So. The necessity of like developing new load rating pro uh, methods for this kind of thank you, this kind of bridges is inevitable. So I'm gonna talk about first. I'm gonna talk about the definition of load rating uh, factor. So load rating factor is uh, defined as calculating capacity of the bridges using inspection um, results and at the same time uh, using plans of the bridges. In, as you can see in this formula, there, is, there are three important factors we have to calculate. One of them is nominal capacity of the bridge. Another is uh, dead load effect and also live load effect. Here in our research, we focused on finding some strategies in order to find nominal capacity of the bridges. Okay. Missing plans have uh, many challenges. For example, they have a uh, lack of documentation at the time of construction. One of is one of them. They have improper document storage. Uh, they don't have any repository updating, and also there is no evolution of data management practices. So current rating practice for bridges, uh, with, for without, uh, bridges without plans is mostly done using uh, engineering judgment by a experiment, exper experience engineer, engineer. So owing to that, here our purpose is to uh, develop the most effective methods for assessing uh, the structures and bridges that that do, uh, do, do not have any plans. So also our outcome is uh, creating a guidance for uh, developing a load rating analysis procedure for structures without plan. So our research approach has been Include, uh, has been divided into three parts. In the first phase, uh, we are looking for without inventory characterization and state of practice. In the second phase, we are looking for experimental field of uh, trails of field 
based load rating techniques. And in the last one, we are looking for extension of the promising techniques, techniques for uh, structures without flans. So uh, as a whole, our overall idea is creating a guidelines for analysis and load rating structure with uh, unknown or in insufficient de details. So as a whole, there are five different load rating strategies for bridges with limited or missing as built information. But our methods centered around finding those methods like based on vibration testing method, finite element mo modeling method, and data driven estimation. And in this uh, presentation, mostly I will talk about finite element modeling based. So finite element model uh, relies on finite element models and structural identification. So one of the subcomponents of structural identification is finite element model updating, through which we um, tune numerical model using some experimental model by changing some unknown parameters in order to do, uh, in order to find uh, optimal value for those parameters. So second method that I will, I won't talk about that those method I am just uh, mentioning briefly is vibration-based simplified method for load rating based on the re relies on estimates of flexual rigidity stiffness for analytical solution. A third method is based on relational in in inference, which is a non-physics-based solution like data mining methods. So as I mentioned before, there are two parameters in load rating uh, factor uh, formula. One of them is Capacity, um, capacity shown as C, including mo modulus of elasticity, area of steel, and internal geometrics. And the second parameter is load effects, including dead load effect and live load effect. So that, uh, these load effects can be obtained using two methods. One of them is based on approximate methods uh, for structural analysis, and second one is based on finite element analysis. Here, we selected first method based on approximate methods for uh, structural analysis. So this is our uh, different type of load rating, live load uh, testing we did on the side. Uh, um, one of them is live load testing, and another one, vibration testing including ambient vibration and impact hammer excitation. Finite element model, uh, first step is creating initial model. So we go site, go to the site of the bridge, get some information of the bridge, measure dimensions, getting some information of the supports of the bridge, and then we come uh, in and create initial uh, simulation of the bridge. And in the next step, we have experimental data from sensors we had installed on the bridge. We have those uh, experimental measurements. And after that, we do model updating through changing some parameters. Here, we have selected area of steel, modulus elasticity as unknown parameters. So these are fun uh, objective functions we have selected for our purposes. Well, uh, first one is based on discrete static model updating. Second one is based on dynamic, discrete dynamic model updating. And third one, a combination of first one and second one. So these are the simulation of the bridge we have created in uh, Abacus software, uh, which is a commercial finite ML element uh, software. For the three first bridges, we somehow had limited information of the bridge. And based on that, we built our initial model and we did uh, optimization process. But for the last one, we did, we did it blind, in a blindside way. We didn't know even uh, dimension of the bridge, um, type of the rebars. We went uh, to the site, we measured uh, bridge uh, dimension, and we did um, initial uh, model based on our measurements.
So this is overall idea. This flowchart shows how model, update, model updating process works. In one side, we have got our uh, exper uh, numerical data from Abacus. On the other side, we have uh, experimental data from sensors. Either it can be uh, static data using, for example, string paths, string gauge, tilt meters. And the other side can be using, uh, it can be obtained using accelerometers. So overall idea is on, on one side, um, Abacus numerical data comes into this uh, MATLAB. In the MATLAB, we have defined objective function, which is function of differences between numerical data and experimental data. And we selected a optimization method for our work. So through optimization, error decreases. And after like a few, uh, it depends on ourselves. We can select iteration, number of iteration by ourselves. We can obtain opt uh, optimal value for unknown parameters we have selected for our purposes. In our case, we had selected modulus elasticity, area of steel, and support boundary conditions like support stiffness parameters. And after obtaining those value, we can obtain uh, li live load effect and dead load effect through ASHTO method. And finally, we can obtain our uh, rating factor. So these are the um, bridges we have selected for our purposes to slab bridge, one of them in good condition and one of them in fair condition. This is a bridges, uh, T-beam bridges that we have selected. Likewise, one in good condition, one is fair condition. These are the illustri illustration of uh, testing the type of sensors we have used, like test meter, strain gauge, strain, strain pads. This illustration implementation of impact hammer, the type of track we use in our test, and the ambient test by selecting a special road, a special, a special path in the road. These are our final uh, reports uh, after doing optimization. We, diff we, we, we had selected different paths for our purposes. We obtain elastic modulus and area of steel for each path. As you can see, there is cons cons consistency between values for different paths. Also, this table uh, obtained from the real plan of the bridge. As you can see, for example, area of steel is very close, the, uh, for very close to the one we have obtained from uh, finite element model updating. Also, these results obtained from uh, for the T-beam bridge. Okay. For finding and conclusion, we concluded that in order to uh, do load rating process, we, we will need to have more information of the bridge, such as um, quality, quantity of the rebars inside the bridge, some geometric uh, geometry of the bridge. These are very important factors in uh, calculating a load rating factor. And also, we developed some uh, very efficient method in order to calculate load rating factor uh, appropriately uh, using finite element model. So that's end of my presentation. So thank you for your attention. Um, thank you, Mehdad. Um, we have five minutes for questions. If you have any questions, can you please use the microphone back there? I have a very simple and quick question. Uh, did you take the effect of reinforcement corrosion in your modeling? No. But bo most of the bridges, they suffer with the reinforcement corrosion. We just wanted to obtain area of steel as, a, as one of the par parameters. But as I mentioned, you can select as many parameters as you can in your uh, finite element model updating. We just selected area of steel, elasticity modulus, boundary conditions. But you can mm, generalize this method for selecting other parameters. Uh, I'm a student at the University of Toledo. I just have a simple question like, uh, uh, in this, you mentioned about uh, LRFR, LFR, and LRFD approaches. So how does the load rating value differs from these different approaches? 
You there are uh, a lot of the, the, those astro methods were our baseline methods. We were like uh, somehow uh, using those methods in order to like they were like baseline in order to compare our methods values for the ashto values. So is it like uh, someone is more conservative and someone is like less conservative, something like that? We cannot say that, no. All the methods that are presented are assuming you know nothing, meaning that you don't know what rebar is there. So even answering your question about corrosion, you're assuming that you know nothing without plans. Yeah. And so all these approaches are just starting points to give you an estimate of what type of rebar is there and how it's distributed as a whole. And then you could attempt to make your rating based on corrosion or conditions. Thank you, Matthew.